Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. And this is going to be another episode of Shed Talk. Now in this episode, I have a bit of a clean up and reorganise a few of my tools. <laughs> Not before time, it was getting a bit scruffy in here. And after the response of the modifications I did on the compound slide, and they had great responses to that. Thank you very much, guys. Um, you know, most people were very complimentary as to how I went about it and the end result, so thanks very much. And I was indeed very pleased with it. It was pointed out to me, and I had actually noticed it myself, about the amount of flex in the table here on my little baby pillar drill. And yeah, it flexes a hell of a lot. I'll demonstrate how it flexes, and then I'll make um, basically a little screw jack for it, um, and you know, in various heights. Now, I have got a scissors jack here, and when I've been drilling larger holes on it in the past, I have put a scissor jack underneath, um, which was again suggested as one way of going about it. But yeah, I've got enough clutter and bits and bobs around the place. Um, something small, convenient, um, sort of multi-use, that one day, with it being basically a screw jack, may come in for use on my milling machine as well. So, I'll show you some footage of me making this... Um, Basically what's a screw jack, but it is a table support. So I've been flat out and haven't had a clean up in a while. And as you can see, let me just pan you around the workshop. We're getting to a point where we can't move. So I think it's time for a clean up. Well, that's a vast improvement. Lathe's clean, needs lubricating, all the worktops clear, everything back in its place. Ah, now let me show you this. So top shelf on the end, various raw materials and liquids, fluids, oils, that sort of thing, hidden behind the boxes. Various organiser boxes with screws, lathe tools, tips, bolts, nuts, washers, all that sort of thing. And then this shelf is my go-to area for the lathe and it's directly opposite the lathe so I could turn around grab something off the shelf straight on the lathe however look at the state of it the collection has grown somewhat I think I need to do something about it I cleared out what was basically junk in the top part of the toolbox on the below shelf and now I've got all my drills and center drills anything related to drilling chucks that sort of thing is all in there and then the top shelf is purely what I use on a regular basis on the lathe. And I've basically got all my collet setups that end. Center, obviously I've got pens, scribers, that sort of thing, deburring tools. Odd bits and bobs, my tapping head, my die grinder, magnetic stands, clocks. Lathe tools are all up there, random ones that I use on a regular basis. And obviously the tools that go in my... Uh, tool post and uh, my boring bar tool post and my original tool post is hiding there at the back which I still use occasionally for the high speed steel parting tool so yes a lot better organized should be able to put my hands straight on whatever I want a few people have pointed out to me that they've noticed in my videos the amount of flex in the table on my little pillar drill or drill press, I mean, they, they, they've got several different names, but I'll call it little pillar drill, little bench top pillar drill. It's only a very small machine, I, mean, I think it's maximum 13mm diameter uh, will fit in the chuck. But yes, indeed, it does flex quite a bit. Um, I'll show you the amount of flex. So I've got a clock on the underside, um, and I'll just push against it with the chuck. Normal sort of amount of pressure you would use. As you can see, the clock is on zero. I mean, I can get five hour deflection with my finger I'm not going to go too mad at this but that would be about the maximum pressure you would use for drilling I would have thought on a little machine like this and I'm easily getting 30 thou and I dare say I could go even more on that 35 okay but yes as you can see it flexes quite badly now it has been suggested to me to use a scissor jack underneath it um, the range I've got is actually Ooh, let's just take the clock out that would probably be as close as I go send a drill into a bit of 12mm plate something like that 
and that actually measures up about 215 mil from the underside of the table here down onto the base. So the minimum it goes, if I put it right down, you know, at the bottom of it, what's it? There's 82 mil under there. So if I had my, um, say for instance, I had a, you know, 13 mil drill bit, and I was drilling something about this height in the vice, I could quite often need to put it to the bottom. And it flexes just as badly down there. If I have got something rather long, I can use the base there and jiggle about with it with parallels, you know, bits of packing to get me lower than that base position and what have you. So it does give me a fair range. Um, let's just get a tape measure. I mean, it's not massive, but I suppose if you thought, you know, a drill sticking out 30, 40 mil, I can get, you know, a, a good 200 mil underneath it, let's say, with a drill bit as well, you know, in normal use. Now, scissor jacks typically, yeah, probably around about the 80 mil under there, 80, 85 mil, something like that, and they go right up to 300 odd mil. But you've got to wind them round and round and round, so, you know, you've got to, if you if you want to drill something with a centre drill, and then the next job you're going to is down here somewhere, you've got to wind it all the way. So I'm thinking of basically a set of I won't call it a screw jack, but a set of collars that'll all snap one on top of the other that'll go under here to give me a range, something, you know, every 12 mil. So I've got 50 mil thick ones, 25 mil thick ones, and, you know, half inch, 12, 12 and a half mil thick ones. And I could just pop in another layer depending on where I am. So I think, right, okay, I need to be up here somewhere, pop in a couple of 50s. Maybe my base one will be maybe a mil thicker than the. 82 where it is at the bottom so maybe if I had the base at 85 and then I had a 12 and a half I could put in there or a 25 or I could do both of them 37 or I could put a 50 in and then another 12 and a half so on and so forth we'll work out what set we need um, something like little rings of aluminium like this with a stub one end and a hollow the other where you could just stack them as to what you want so yeah in fact <laughs> looking at that piece of aluminium doesn't look far away maybe a bit thick for what I'm after um, but I'd like to have a wider base on it, so I'll see what I got lying about. Maybe make the base part first at uh, I don't know 50 odd mil, something like that. We'll see what we can get. Um, maybe the, the basic one will be the, a base plus 25 or something like that. We'll see where we go. So, making up the base, I got a 19 diameter spigot on the end, 8 mil, and I'm just turning a diameter of 43 which is going to be the small diameter that runs all the way up the little stacks that I make. I'm doing 43 back about 20 mil. That should be about 8. So 19 diameter by 8. And then 43.12. Another little scratch off there. So 0.05. We'll try that. Then I'm going to drill an 11 mil hole down to the middle. It'll all become evident shortly <laughs> once I make the next piece. Okay, let's get that out of the way. my little pair of pliers for pulling swarf out the way. I've tied it up and hidden them. Boy, three. Near enough. Near and near as I can get it without messing about. Chamfer there, chamfer there before we turn it round. Just get rid of those sharp edges. So looking good, looking good. So a little chunk of it. A bit bigger, I think. That looks nicer. It's got a mill wide. I'm gonna do the same there. a little bit wider. Happy days. So I'll let me all through the middle and then I'm going to turn it round. But it will all become clear. I'm going to go right through with this. It's going to be clearance on a 10mm bolt. So it's 11mm drill. quite nicely with that.
So I didn't go into too much detail, but you can see what it is. This is going to be the base for the jack. That's the 19 by 8. I put a circlip groove basically in there, an undercut with a parting tool, and fitted an O-ring into it. And then I profiled the outside to make it look nice, and that's down to the 30, 43 diameter. So I now need to make a steel piece which pops on over the top of there with a thread in it to take the bolt and that will be the basically the base and the top part of the stackable system and then we'll have another piece maybe 25 thick and maybe 250 mil thick pieces to stack them up so I've got a piece of steel up in the lathe let me just show you bit rusty piece of steel out my scrap bin it'll do the job for the top bit so I'll start machining that so as per normal face it off Just touch up on there, just lock the carriage. Oh, I think there's a little bit in the middle. I don't remember what this was scrapped from. Not a clue. Rather than unlock my carriage, I've just put a little cut on with the compound. My compound set on about 30 odd degrees. Lock the compound very tight. There we are. I'll come back out gently across that to give myself a finish. There we are. So I'm looking for a diameter of 43. Uh, I don't know what I'm on at the moment, let's have a look. I don't think I'm far off 43 to be honest. 45 is it? 44.3. So I know I can safely take a mill off. Throw in a bit, I hope it cleans up. Let's throw down a bit. Last touch. Let's take point two off there, see how we go. I'm just giving the outside down to 43. If I finish size, I'll be able to hold it the other way around then after. That should do me. Let's take another point two. Take it to point four. Running about uh, 500 RPM. Have another measure and see where we are. Get the gear over zero. Oh, that's all for top. So, where are we? 43.7. So, that's 0.35 aside. We'll start with 0.2. up a bit, about 650. Take that to 3. And we'll have a bit of a little bit of juice on there. I don't know what this bar is, it doesn't machine very nice.
okay, got some of my hair left. <laughs> that stuff was a bit smoky. 42.9. Oh well. It's not critical. Purely cosmetic. Uh, 45 on the end. And I want it something like the one I put on the top of there, but a mill wide. Just so they're the same. Again, just for cosmetics. There we go. So, I am going to want to tap this right through M10 to take this, which is going to be my bolt on the top. I will polish the numbers off there afterwards. And it's going to want to set a recess to take that spigot. So the first thing I'll do whoop, is drill it out with an M10 tapping drill. Well, I'll just send it drilling it first. And I think we'll stick something like a 6mm through first. So M10 tapping drill. 8.5 that's nice and sharp this drill I only sharpened it the other day slow it down a bit I've got an 18 mil drill You hear me? It's cutting quite nicely, but I'm going to take it gently because of the torque in the way. We'll call that zero. That was the start point. Roll will do me on this. Eight turns. One, two. Three. So I just touch on the face, give myself a zero, and I'll touch on the ball. Up zero. So let's say that drilled 18 point. Let's say it drilled 18.5. I'll take 0.25 aside. At 8 mil deep, and we'll have a measure. I think I'll go just beyond eight, maybe eight and a half. There we go. That's point two. That's 0.27. We'll have a measure after that. Okay, let's see what that means. So it's not critical because it's going to be a fit on the O-ring. Let's have a look. 18.9. Okay. And that measures... Nineteen there across the O-ring. Nineteen point six. So if I aimed at nineteen point four, shall we say? Okay. We'll suck it and see. I think this method is called. I'll go with nineteen point one. So that's going to be point one aside. We'll try it and we'll increase it until we get the desired fit. Well, 
here's the point where I say. Eight and a half feet. Suck it and see. The aluminium fits in and that is way too tight. I think another point one aside. Set a zero. This is little bugger. Just bringing it back out gently, then take the spring out. <laughs> Try it again. I think I could get it in, but it's going to need some more. By zero five side, I think. And we'll try that. I think I'm going to have to sort of... Well, it does go in. But... Still a little bit snug. Maybe... Needs a little bit of lubrication in the hole. Or on the rubber. We'll see. Maybe because the rubber's dry. A little bit of oil. But it's uh, reluctant to go in the hole. I don't want to... Have to force these ones together. Well, that actually is where I want to be. So I'm glad I stopped there. So, little 45 on me. Lean reverse. Rubber game entry to the back of there. Much better. I wonder what size that actually was. Chewed the rubber up there a little. So that was 19.5. Okay, well, here we are. Um, think I needed to change the tip in my lathe too, and I'm going to give this a little polish up and then spin it around. So just a little measure. We've actually got to take 10 mil off that place. So I've just marked a zero on the front. Oh, hang on. And then I skim back. Too slow. Set my gear out to zero. Taking about a three mil cut here across the face, but with a very fine hand key. Stopped at nine and a half. Taking about two mil side off. So I've got an extremely fine hand key that I'm using just to get rid of the bulk of this material. So 
I'm just doing it the old fashioned way. The chuck is holding it nicely. Keep breaking the swarf. As long as I get it started, I can always hand tap it. Just want to get it started nice and true. I'm taking the lathe tool out. And now it's just starting to slip. But I know I've got it nicely started. There we go. Okay. So I think for cosmetics, we're going to have a big 45 degree shampoo on the front, eh? So we'll do that next. We'll just put that away. So I'll just pull it out the chuck a bit and we'll have a great big 45 degree shampoo on the front. I just as well that you see me doing that. And let's bring him out something like that. How's that run? Let's have a look. Hmm. Yeah, pretty good. So we'll have the uh, chuck out of there. Tail stuff back out of the way. And I want. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll wrap it in with a 45 degree bit. And then I'll set the compound to 45. Move that on my drawers. No, we're alright. Alright, let's have a look. Tapping that through M10. Ah, 
And let's just try our little boat. Yep, works nicely. So next trick is just dome that over a bit better. Where we are so far, we've got the base piece and aluminium, the foot and the top piece, which will do all the pushing up under the table. Obviously that's adjustable and lockable and it'll go up 50 mil. So when that's right down and that pops on there, that's 82. The lowest position my table will go is 81, so I've made 82. Anyway, um, no, the other way around. This is 81 and my table goes to 82, so I'll always have to screw it out a little bit. So it'll do the minimum size. I'm going to make another piece now out of smaller diameter aluminium, this sort of diameter, which will have the female, I like that one, in the one end, um, maybe 25 mil thick, something similar to this, and a male, and probably two 50 mil ones as well. And then I'll be able to chuck a piece on there, put the lid on. If that's if I want to go up, you know, ish, ish 25, drop a 25 on, put that on, I'm up 25, and anywhere in between. And then I can put a 50 mil on, on top, I can put another 25 and a 50, or I can put two 50s and what have you, and it'll take me up somewhere. And with the adjustment of that, it would take me there. So two 50s and a 25 mil in aluminium. So I need to knock up a couple of those. But... You've seen the way it's done now, so I'm sure you don't need to see me uh, make those. And I'll probably show you them being used in another video.